Let's start by importing the React library, which is necessary to define React components. Here we are defining a class named ErrorBoundary that extends the React component class. This will give us access to React's lifecycle methods to handle errors. Inside the constructor, we initialize the component state with has error set to false, indicating that no error has occurred yet. The static method get derived state from error is called after a child component throws an error. As a result, we set the has error state to true, which well used to decide whether to show a fallback UI. The component did catch lifecycle method is used for error logging. Here, we're simply logging the error and error information to the console. In the render method, we check if an error has been caught by evaluating this state has error. If true, we return a simple fallback UI, a heading with the text something went wrong. If no error has occurred, the error boundary component renders its children components normally, preserving the UI as intended. Finally, we export the error boundary component so it can be reused across our next JS application. Now, let's import the error boundary component that we've just created. Assuming it's located in the components folder of your next JS project. We define a custom MyApp component which wraps the entire application. This component receives two props, component and page props. Here, we use the error boundary component. All child components inside it will be monitored for JavaScript errors. We render the main component of the current page, spreading the page props into it, so each page gets the specific props it needs. By wrapping the main component inside the error boundary, if an error happens anywhere in our component tree, it will be caught and handled gracefully. And lastly, we export the MyApp component, making it the root component of our next JS application.